Okay, although I am Canadian, I might do a, a really poor, thick Australian accent, even though I'm not from down now. I'm not from the land down under. I'm from the land top over. But anyway, yeah, I put another shrimp on the bar because we're going to get into this. All right, so now that I've insulted everybody, uh, this one's kind of an interesting one. It's kind of a fun one. It's about an extinct giant lizard. Or is it? Dun, dun, dun. All right, this is the uh, Malagania. Malagania. I can never speak. Uh, Megalania, sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking like the the Spanish song, the uh, Malaguena, uh, the one there. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, the Megalania is what we're after today, not not the Malaguena. Uh, Malaguena. Anyway, uh, was the largest liver, uh, lizard <laughs> liver lizard to ever live in Australia, possibly in the world? It is closely related to modern uh, gonanas, um, but much larger. Its maximum length was, was approximately 5.5 meters. Uh, its weight was about 600 kilograms. So it was twice as large in length of the Komodo dragon. There, there's a lot of similarities. I guess it was like a, a steroided version <coughs> or a Hulk version of a, of a Komodo dragon, I guess. Uh, the Megalania was so similar to uh, Gonanas that uh, paleontologists have changed its uh, scientific name to, uh, to uh, uh, Varianus. Uh, the scientific name uh, for the modern uh, Gonanas. Uh, recent, uh, recent shows that uh, uh, Megalania's was also venomous, uh, I guess much like the uh, uh, Komodo dragon. Megalania was the largest carnivore to have lived in Australia dur during the last two million years, but was probably less common than the uh, predatorial marsupial lion uh, Theolacolio. Theoloco Leo? Theoloco Leo? Uh, Carnifix. Uh, it was. It, it would have uh, ambushed its prey with possibly including uh, the uh, the rhinoceros size uh, Diporton uh, Optium, uh, and then torn it to pieces using its very large claws and serrated curved teeth. The Megalania uh, probably also scavenged for food. Uh, feasted on dead animals in its local, uh, located in the uh, its uh, keen sense of smell. Megalania uh, most likely lived in the grassy land and open woodlands, although some scientists think it may have been particularly uh, partially aquatic. Uh, incomplete fossil skeletons have been found in the South Wales, South Australia, and Queensland, particularly in the uh, Darling Downs. Uh, it comes. Uh, it became extinct before the peak of the last ice age, about 18,000 years ago, when Australia was uh, becoming uh, drier and Megalania's uh, prey less numerous. Devil dragon sightings. Dun, dun, dun. This is where it gets. This is where it gets fun. Uh, I like this kind of stuff. I love this kind of stuff. It's interesting. It's like instead of Bigfoot, you got a big freaking iguana running around eating stuff. Awesome. Um, Australia once had a monitor lizard that was about 10 to 20 feet larger than the Komodo dragon. Uh, scientists uh, and cryptozoologists uh, call it the Megalania uh, prisca. The reptile reached 30 feet long and weighed about 1,000 pounds or more. The devil dragon is one of the listed uh, as creatures extincted from the uh, Ice Age, or is it extinct? The creature has been sighted many times in the last century, and some sightings suggest that it lives also in New Guinea. Uh, one afternoon, a survey engineer returned to his work truck. Uh, tired, exhausted, he spotted what looked like a fallen tree near his car. Blaming his fatigue for the, his lack of detail, he climbed uh, in his car and slammed the door. The log suddenly bolted away. <laughs> That's intimidating. Uh, it ended up being a lizard of 15 feet in length. Australian cryptozoologist Rex uh, Gilroy uh, is convinced these creatures are still alive and it is only a matter of time before one of it, one is captured or killed or brought in. Kind of like, I guess, like the Tasmanian wolf, which they say there's probably some of those running around too. Uh, recently, as late as the 1970s, there have been devil dragon sightings. In July of 1979, Rex uh, Gilroy was told uh, about a footprint of a monster found in the recently plowed field. Uh, throughout the field, there were 30 or so tracks from this enormous lizard. Although rain ruined most of the prints, Dr. Gilroy was able to, to make some castings of one footprint uh, that wasn't damaged by the rainfall. The footprint looks surprisingly like something that might have uh, been made by the devil dragon. Also in 1975, uh, sightings of the devil dragon ro arose. Uh, this time, it was the best possible witness, uh, 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 herptologist Frank uh, Gordon, 
after constructing some field work in a uh, Watan Mountains uh, in uh, New South Wales. Returned to his vehicle after staring, uh, starting his engines, he saw what at first he thought was a log, uh, scampering off at the end. Uh, at the end of uh, it, ended up being a lizard uh, of some 30 feet or more in length. That, that's a pretty big lizard. Um, the another incident included a, a farmer who observed a gigantic lizard walking around on on, on one of his fields. It was uh, along a wire fence, so the farmer used to set. Uh, a fence uh, post as a guide to estimate the beast uh, was the length of 20 to 25 feet. Uh, the cor corresponds with the uh, uh, Megalania uh, Prisca. Australia uh, might not be the only place for the devil dragon uh, is living. Some sightings have been spotted in New Guinea. Also, a French priest in 1960s was traveling up uh, the river with a native guide in order to uh, research his mission. During the trip, he spotted a uh, devil dragon lying on a fallen tree in the sun. Uh, he told the natives to stop, but the natives, knowing the, of the danger of this monster, kept going. You know, some people are smarter than others. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's like, no way, man, that thing will eat us. <laughs> the priest uh, returned to spot the following morning and measured the tree. It was 40 feet long, yet the lizard uh, almost matched it. At that that's that's pretty big whether or not the megalania is still alive today is uncertain but aborigines will continue to tell stories of the devil dragon uh yeah that, that, i think that that's pretty cool uh, somebody sent me the link uh, a little while back and i just i'm just getting to it now uh explore survivalist uh, tim akron uh eaten by the devil dragon oh sorry that stupid thing what's that popping up there get out of my way can't read here okay uh in 2007 this monster was caught on film by a survivalist, uh, Tim Akron, uh, in uh, Daintree uh, Rainforest of Australia. Uh, Daintree, uh, Daintree, Daintree, uh, Rainforest of Australia. Australia. Tim Akron was making a documentary on extreme survival, uh, extreme survival show. What did what he didn't realize was it would be the last documentary, and he wouldn't survive. Well, that's kind of crazy. Uh, he was dropped into a remote location with no food, no shelter, and only his survival skills and a camera to protect him from wildlife and the unexplored area. His documentary he documented was la uh, lasted seven. Documentary lasted seven days. He would survive for two of those of this expedition. On his first day, he discovered human remains in the area and accidentally filmed uh, the devil dragon. Uh, he does not know. Uh, he does not know of the film, and dismisses the accident as a rainforest wildlife. Later that same day, he is bitten by the uh, megalania, which while searching for food, the devil dragon, like other lizards known to man, has a saliva substance that is very toxic and venomous. Uh, that have been uh, bitten. For example, a komodo dragon. I think there's like 48, 49, or 50 toxins in their venom that kills you as time goes on the infection spread and tim tries to get to a remote village five miles away for medical help uh, he meets the predator with his demise uh, tim was never found but the camera was found it was covered in saliva and the creature uh, took the the life of tim akron the dna was tested from the saliva it did not match any other dna that scientists had ever seen before this was a horrible thing to happen and the monster will be placed in the textbooks as being extinct until one is actually found, uh, captured, killed, or brought in for research. Uh, may your film not be put to rest uh, with you, Tim Akron, uh, but used to create expeditions to bring the creature in for research. Um, yeah, this is kind of like, uh, I love cryptozoology uh, stuff. It, it really... Uh, expands the mind, uh, so to speak. Uh, who knows if these things are still running around? Uh, give you a list of other, you know, like the Ogopogo, the um, Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot, uh, obviously the uh, what you call it, uh, Sasquatch, uh, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, well, you know, kind of all the same thing. Uh, the uh, Tasmanian wolf, those type of things. There's a whole bunch of host of uh, cryptozoologist things, and this is just one of them. That said, uh, there's also, if you want to get even more kind of um, uh, interesting, is the Red Deer Cave uh, people and the Australfrolensine, I always pronounce it wrong, uh, may have been spotted in some regions of that part of the world, not necessarily Australia, but, you know, in the Philippines and stuff like that. And some of these... Uh, you know, ancient things are, could possibly be still running around, probably in extremely, extremely low numbers, like 
you know, who knows. But even in Africa, there's these uh, sea monsters that are in like lakes and rivers that, again, who knows how they get in there. They could be going through holes in a mug bog somewhere <laughs> and coming out somewhere else. Uh, so there's all kinds of uh, things that they discover. And you think, okay, yeah, but it's so big it should be easy to find. But then uh, giant squids, look at those things. Uh, they got the largest ocular cavity of any animal that ever existed. I mean, some of these eyeballs are like three feet wide, right? Um, that type of thing. And these things could be hundreds. Uh, some of them are like over 30 feet, uh, that, uh, up to 100 feet long or more. So some of these monsters in the deep, same thing. Oh, no, it's just uh, sea tails and stuff. Like that. And all of a sudden, something washes up on shore. It's like, oh, I guess they were telling the truth. Uh, that type of thing. So rare does uh, the six, six gill shark is another example uh, found off the coast of uh, the Atlantic here in Canada. Uh, thought to be extinct for millions and millions of years. I mean, the six gill shark is, is like a modern, it's still, it's a prehistoric animal that's still around. Uh, that, that type of thing. So you never know. Again, even if they're not in large numbers, they could be there. But something as terrifying as this, I mean, this is kind of, if they did find one, it's kind of like finding a dinosaur. Uh, maybe, and I know some of the more religious people will probably get riled up by this and stuff like that, uh, and so will some of the atheist types that when you hear about the people that, you know, believe the world is only 6,000 years old, etc., etc., and man walked with dinosaurs, well, maybe some of these legends come from places like this, and, you know, what's the difference between a, a, a gigantic 30, 40 foot long Komodo dragon and a dinosaur? pretty much the name <laughs> when you kind of think about it okay in the time frame sure but uh, that they lived in but but you get the idea you know somebody could make the assessment that uh, this was a man walking with a dinosaur so again maybe that's where some of these things hatch out from uh, that said if this beast is still running around uh, the way the Komodo dragon works is basically it bites you it poisons you waits till you kind of are too weak to fight back and then it then it just rips you apart and the strength of an animal like that, I mean, even a small lizard that you can fit in your hand has a lot of strength for its size. An iguana, have you ever tried to hold an iguana? If they want to move, it's like you just, they, they're just like a, they're like a plow. They'll just, you know, the turtles, the same thing. They're just extremely strong. So something that strong, you wouldn't have much of a chance against, uh, you know, there, there would be no way to really stop something like that. Another beast that runs around, obviously, even more kind of dangerous and more feared is, you know, like, you know, gigantic crocodiles there was one filmed on a golf course in australia a couple of days ago that from the making of this video the thing had to be like 15 to 20 feet long it was just a big big crocodile and there's one that uh it's a down in florida it's like one of the biggest crocodiles i've ever seen uh almost 30 feet long when you you know at the end but from tip to tail and the head on the like they figure it weighs well over 2,000 pounds this thing is just a monster and when when they, they the nice thing is they kind of know where it is but it's almost a sarcus it's like a mini sarcosuchus uh, which is like was the gigantic crocodile back in the you know the prehistoric time so to speak uh but you get the idea that these things uh immensely power definitely uh would be incredible ambush predators you wouldn't have much of a chance uh to fight yourself fight off one of those things and if you're half paralyzed one of those eating you alive and ripping you apart a uh, pretty pretty gory way to go but that said if these things were walking around in that rare what do you do with them you know like they're almost so rare that you're best to just leave them in the wild uh than to try to capture them because maybe that's the one that maybe not the last one but the last breeding one or something like that so what do you do i mean you got a man killer out there not just a man killer but you know something that's going to wreak havoc on the wildlife living out of its 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 era uh so to speak you know what do you do with it right and obviously if it, the things that going to attack you and you have a means of, of of like maybe you got like if you're lucky you got a double gun with you you're going to probably shoot it and that would be the end of it right unfortunately that would be the way it'd have to be you know you or them uh, most people are not, you know, most people, well, oh, I'd be cruel or whatever. Yeah, but you're not going to sacrifice yourself <laughs> for this. Oh, there's a rare animal that shouldn't exist today. I'll let him eat me. No, you're, you're, you're going to fight back. Um, that said, one coming in dead or alive, it could be just a matter of time. Uh, you never know. With these things, it's really hard to say exactly uh, how you find these things. Again, as for as many species that do go extinct uh, every day, uh, new ones are found, you know, so things are always changing, but sometimes things just hang around. Crocodiles, again, they're one of the, crocodiles and sharks are some of the oldest uh, animals on the planet that, that really haven't changed much uh, since they're, you know, they're the, 
since their so-called inception, so to speak. So with some of these big lizards, again, very fascinating. Hey, I mean, to see a, a tree log take off running on you, that would probably, if you didn't just die of fright, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that'd be, and I can imagine something that big would move incredibly fast. Uh, that's the other thing. It would probably sprint at about 50 miles an hour. Maybe it wouldn't run very, very far, but you take some lizards, like their endurance is, is incredible. Uh, other lizards, uh, not so much. But if you look at the Komodo dragon, those things can move pretty fast. There was a guy, I can't remember if it was 1970s, 1980s, or whatever, walking along with his wife uh, on the Galapagos Islands, and uh, basically all they found was his book and his glasses, and they figure he got dragged off by Komodo dragons. That's because they found the tracks where they last found his track. They figure they, it probably bit him in the ankle, uh, the poison took took effect, and you're pretty much, the only way you're going to, I don't, think there's anything you could do with Komodo dragon bite let alone this gigantic thing would probably have even more powerful venom uh, you probably it's probably worse than a snake bite in the sense that the, probably the only thing you could do if you got bit in the leg is amputate your leg <laughs> you know what I mean that's probably the only thing that's going to save you but the problem is is amputating your leg in the middle of the bush is probably not going to work out well for you either so it, it, yeah it's a, yeah yeah what a machine that is right but that said, the speed that this thing could probably, you know, again, a master of its craft, uh, how fast would this thing dart out on you, especially being that long? And I mean, really, if it put a foot on you, you wouldn't be able to move. You, you know, you, you'd be, you know, you, it would have so much power, it would just push you down and, and start chewing, right? Uh, and ripping and tearing. And ee. The only thing that would make it more scary is if it had laser beams in its eyes. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But anyway, I guess I'm going to leave it at that. So, um uh, if you guys, especially from the land down under down there, if you've got any uh, stories about it that you may have seen one or you think you've seen one or you know uh, a, per, a friend of a friend of a friend, uh, yeah, let the stories fly. Everybody always loves this kind of stuff. Uh, some people, ah, no, it's all crap. It, uh, there's no, no no such thing, whatever. And some people are kind of funny like that. They don't have an open mind towards these things. I'm like, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Uh, if the animal existed before, it could probably exist again in some form. Even maybe it's just a modern day version of, of something old. You never know, or who knows? It's it's who who knows, right? Uh, that type of thing. So yeah. So if you like this kind of content, please consider making a donation to the channel. Links down below. Thank you so much to everybody who has. If you want to make a couple of bucks for yourself, you can check out my TSU link. It's also down below and. Uh, it basically uh, works a lot like Facebook. It doesn't cost you anything to join. You can share pictures and memes and stories and poetry and what have you. And maybe if you got a Megalania sighting uh, on video, by all means, throw it on. <laughs> throw it on there. Why not? Uh, next to that, write, subscribe, share, comment, like my good friends and mates. And uh, be true to yourself. Be true to others. Always, always do the right thing. And have a great day, eh? Mate, uh, all cranky. End of the show. <laughs> all right, have a good one. Eh? Now, that, now that I made all my Australian uh, <laughs> subscribers, uh, I'm going to see like a drop in subscribership. I can see it now. Yeah, it's like, uh, I know if they ever find one who they're sending it after first. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, geez. All right. Anyway, you guys have yourselves a great day. Eh? Good day, mates. Hi and welcome. Okay, although I am Canadian, I might do a, a really poor, thick Australian accent, even though I'm not from down, down, I'm not from the land down under, I'm from the land top over. But anyway, yeah, put another shrimp on the bobby because we're going to get into this. All right, so now that I've insulted everybody, uh, this one's kind of an interesting one. It's kind of a fun one. It's about an extinct giant lizard. Or is it? Dun, dun, dun. All right, this is the uh, Malagania. Malagania. I can never speak. Uh, Megalania. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like the the Spanish song, the uh, Malaguena, uh, the one there. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, so yeah, the Megalania is what we're after today, not not the Malaguena. Uh, Malaguena. Anyway, uh, was the largest liver, uh, lizard, <laughs> liver, lizard to ever live in Australia, possibly in the world. It is closely related to modern uh, gonanas, um, but much larger. Its maximum length was, was approximately 5.5 meters. Uh, its weight was about 600 kilograms, so it was twice as large in length of the Komodo dragon. There's a lot of similarities. I guess it was like a, a steroided version <coughs> or a Hulk version of a, of a Komodo dragon, I guess. Uh, the Megalania was so similar to uh, Gonanas that uh, paleontologists have changed its uh, scientific name to, uh, to uh, uh, Varianus. 
uh, the scientific name for the modern uh, gonanas. Uh, recent, sh uh, sh recent shows that uh, m uh, Megalania's was also venomous, uh, I guess much like the uh, uh, Komodo dragon. Megalania was the largest carnivore uh, to have lived in Australia dur uh, during the last two million years, but was probably less common than the uh, predatorial marsupial lion uh, Theolacolio Theo Leo, Theo Leo, uh, Carnifix. Uh, it was. It would have uh, ambushed its prey with possibly including uh, the uh, the rhinoceros size uh, Diporton uh, Optium, uh, and then torn it to pieces using its very large claws and serrated curved teeth. The Megalania uh, probably also scavenged for food, uh, feasted on dead animals in its local uh, located in the uh, its uh, keen sense of smell. Megalania uh, most likely lived in the grassy land and open woodlands, although some scientists think it may have been particularly uh, partially aquatic. Uh, incomplete fossil skeletons have been found in the South Wales, South Australia and Queensland, particularly in the uh, Darling Downs. Uh, 